requires. Before we do that, we're just going to have a quick look at the process properties under the startup options to check that the uh, FPGA starts up with C clock um, as opposed to the user clock or JTAG bus clock. So uh, C clock. Okay. We're then able to um, run that. That should hopefully generate us um, our file test.bit. Okay, so it's generated successfully here. Okay, so from that we then need to go ahead and uh, generate the target from ACE uh, file. So, as mentioned earlier on, this stage here generates us the test.bit file, um, which programs the FPGA uh, directly. Um, what we want to be, to be able to do is program the PROM file also on the, on the development board. Um, the FPGA is uh, volatile, so as soon as you um, turn, turn the device off, um, the, the program will be lost. So we need to program the PROM file so that every time you start the device up, the FPGA can read the configuration um, in and uh, is able to resume correctly. So, <coughs> generate the target device will tell us that we don't have half of the information it requires. Um, and it will tell us that it needs to load impact um, to see what sort of hardware we've got. Okay, so yeah, no impact project file exists as I said before, and then click OK to open the impact. Okay. So now impact opens, and again we've got an option create prom file uh, here. We we'll double click to launch. From here we'll be using the Xilinx uh, flash prom. The device I've got has a XCF04S um, PROMS family chip on it. And uh, add that device. Uh, again, press next. Go into the name here, uh, test, the capital to keep uh, to keep informed. We're going to enter, um, gonna, sorry, going to create an MCS file. Um, and that's pretty much all we need to do. It's going to put that in the same folder as we we had previously. <coughs> so OK does that for us. Just lets us know that it's added the device. OK, what we now need to do is add the test.bit file we spoke about earlier on, from back from the generate programming file pane stage here. So that's going to take that for us. At the moment we don't wish to add another device, so select in no and then it tells us we've completed the entry. OK, so from here we now have the option available to generate the file. So we'll click in that, it creates the file we need, the MCS file we mentioned a moment ago, and that's the file that will get loaded into our, into our PROM file, sorry, into the PROM chip even, uh, shortly. So at this point here we're going to save the project, um, a sensible name, impact project for example. OK, it tells us now that we need to enter this into the target uh, configuration target device, so we'll do that now. Uh, it's not strictly necessary, but, um, but it's uh, good workflow practice, so we'll quit, quit impact for a moment. Uh, again, save it to keep any up-to-date changes. Under the configure target device option, we now do right-click process properties select the impact project we've just saved. You can also tick automatically run generate the PROM file. So that will automatically make you a PROM uh, file on the .mcs file uh, as well as the .bit file so you can always program the PROM instead of just the FPGA um, as we discussed a second ago. Okay, so from that um, we then go to uh, manage configuration project I'll we'll click in that, we'll launch impact again. Uh, hopefully. Or not, maybe give that another encouragement. <laughs> Fair enough, that doesn't want to launch. Never good. It's telling us that this, this stage doesn't exist when, when we know that does exist. So let's give that another go.
Okay, either way, hopefully yours isn't quite as buggy as mine, so I'll simply grab um, impact from the menu. No. Okay, yep, yeah, we'll load this product in again. So, sorry about that. Um, as I say, parts of this uh, ISC are quite buggy, um, especially when you run them under, under Unix, but uh, um, double clicking on this link here should open uh, impact exactly as this does um, and it should load the file here impact project that we saved um, in here I'm, I'm thinking it's possibly to do with the space that I left in the file name here but either way yes that should have should have loaded that for us so what we can then do is go to the boundary scan double clicking on that right click on the background and do initialize JTAG uh, chain Okay, so now you can see it's read our JTAG chain here, this set of images, and it tells us that the identifier succeeded. So what we can now do is asking us do we want to add um, and assign configuration files. Um, select yes to this. Um, the, first pro uh, the first device it highlights is the FPGA itself. Uh, we don't wish to program that directly, but should you do wish to do that, then, then the, the test.bit file will be programmed into that. We're going to bypass that. And the next device it highlights is the, uh, the PROM chip. And here we're going to program test.mcs into the chip. Okay, so uh, open that. <coughs> and then finally the chip, uh, the CPLD chip on the end that we don't need to program either. And we'll bypass that. So it's showing us the options um, the programming properties for device 1, the FPGA. I'm not going to program that, so they're all off. Uh, program uh, device 2 will be um, erased, verified, and programmed. Might also be worth uh, ticking um, the uh, load FPGA, just saves us having to press the load button uh, on the board. Uh, might be worth doing something you'd, you'd possibly consider. Um, the so yeah, load FPGA um, and the CPLD device um, again will be will be erased and verified to be blank, um, though it's not programmed with anything. And set the bypass here. Okay. <coughs> so yeah, we go back to uh, go back to the uh, prom, and then uh, double click program. So the device is being programmed, being verified, and everything finished successfully, which is always a good sign. Okay, now if we can uh, move that out of the way a second, we're done with that for a moment. Uh, bring on screen um, a shot from the webcam. Okay, so this is the uh, the bottom right corner of the uh, Xilinx Spartan 3 uh, FPGA development board uh, made by Digident. And so here are the two switches. Uh, oh well, this switch here, uh, this switch here, and this LED here are the ones we uh, use. So we have uh, in zero, in one, and out zero. At the moment, both switches are downward, which puts them in the off position. So into our exclusive OR gate we're feeding two zeros. <coughs> Obviously that will give you uh, a zero on the output. Changing either of these two um, switches turns the LED on. Now we're feeding in a zero and a one, which um, by logic um, has us uh, an output one. Switching that off returns us back to the original state. Let's hold that. Again, switching the other switch on, and now switching uh, this one gives us um, an output of one again by logic. And switching them both on turns the output off as you would expect, thereby verifying our exclusive or circuit we discussed uh, originally. Um, and that's the line of code that we complete here. So, this line of code here. 
Okay, that completes that brief tutorial. Uh, as I mentioned, if you're interested in um, any of the any of the um, any uh, uh, help on addressing um, uh, JTAG and um, you know getting things to work.